Welcome to Voice Bootcamp. Hi, my name is Faisal Khan, CCI Voice Instructor at VoiceBootcamp.com. In this topic, we will be discussing the Cisco Unified Communication Manager 7.0. Now, the most likely the deployment scenario that you will be seeing is called the centralized call processing. In a centralized call processing deployment site, you have a central office with your cluster of one or many uh, publishers with uh, additional services like voicemail, Unity, IPCCX, stuff like that, or UCCX, sorry. And of course, you have your head office phone. So you you have your head office phone right here, and you have your branch office in UK. You could have a branch office sitting in San Francisco as well. Now, these branch office phone that you see in these areas are registered over the WAN to your branch call manager. Now, this is called centralized call processing. And one of the advantage of centralized call processing is that everything is uh, managed and administered directly in the head office rather than having one administrator here and there. Now, disadvantage th uh, to this is that the branch office will always depend on the WAN connection to have a f complete communication unless you provide an additional service such as SRST. So there is advantage and disadvantage of going centralized. Now cost effect cost wise centralized call processing makes more sense. A uh, single cluster of centralized call processing can handle up to 30,000 phone. So <coughs> when a phone are registered to call managers one of the things that keep uh, you have to understand is how the phone communicate and who is responsible uh, who's um, basically in control of what at what point. So here's an example of two phone. Phone 1 in San Francisco and phone 2 in Toronto, both of them are registered to the same call manager. Now even though they register the same call manager, that means they will dial each other by using four digit, but how do they, how do they communicate and what are the dependency on this? Well the first of all, for both of these devices to communicate, they may have to make sure that they have network connectivity with the call manager and then you have to make sure that the call manager is up and running. Now, SFO phone wants to send a call to Toronto phone one, 2. So he dials, the calls get picked up by the call manager, which is a step number 1, call setup. In second step of the call, uh, call, that call manager will look at the number that was dialed or DNIS information from the San Francisco phone and does a E164 lookup. And then in this E164 lookup, what the call manager is trying to do, uh, validate is to see if the destination number is registered to itself or it's a number that has to go over a trunk. If it's registered to itself, then it's an on-net call. Now, if it's not, if it's ha if it has to go across the network somewhere else, then most likely this is an off-net call. So, does a call manager realize the number belongs to one of the other IP phone? In that case.